Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, it's Monday and I'm starting to get caught up on things. Now today we're going to go ahead and take a look, as I said, at uh, the staging yard tracks here on the layout, uh, getting them installed. I've got them installed already, but I will show you what I've done. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with doing each individual track, but I'll, I'll give you some tips on uh, putting these in and some of the things you need to think about uh, as far as providing uh, rail gaps and allowing for some expansion and contraction. We'll take a look at the wiring, uh, the soldering of the wires and the feeders uh, for the uh, individual rails here. And then we're going to take a look at the connection between the IP digital and the various turnouts that make up the yard ladder. And we'll have these all ready to go next time on Friday. Uh, to make the final connections and wire, wire everything up. And then it's on to the control panel. And with that, as I said at the end of my last video, I'm going to be using the new DCC Concepts ESP wireless system for that control panel, which will allow me to, pro, uh, to have a control panel without any physical connections to the layout. It'll be totally wireless. So I'm looking forward to getting all those materials out and going through how uh, the various components work. And there's only two basic uh, components that uh, make up that system. So we'll take a look at that and move on from there. So let's go ahead and get started. But first, I want to remind you, hit that little red uh, subscribe button. And when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. As you can see here, I've made a lot of progress here uh, with getting the staging yard tracks glued down using the liquid nails and uh, used the same process I used for the uh, yard ladder. Uh, so I didn't bother showing you all of that. Now at a number of locations like here, 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 um, there's one back up here somewhere and, and I've marked a number of others, one up here. Uh, these are locations where I am not going to solder the rail joiners to the rails. Uh, I, I typically solder all of my rail joiners except for certain areas, and I call these floaters. And what they are is expansion and contraction joints. And you want to leave the rail joiner unsoldered so that if the temperatures fluctuate a lot in your layout room, then your tracks can move. And if they're soldered together, that won't happen. And if you're in an area where you expect some very high temperatures, let's say you have your layout located in an attic or a loft or in a garage somewhere uh, where it's very warm, uh, you can end up with tracks buckling literally when they expand and you don't have an expansion gap left. So a lot of people uh, believe that, and, and I would do it if I were in that kind of scenario, uh, of leaving a gap between the rails and something that you can at least get your fingernail through because you want those rails to be able to expand out a little bit. Otherwise, they will buckle on you. And I've seen extreme examples uh, from layouts uh, in garages in California where it, it, it was just a mess because it looked like a snake instead of uh, a straight uh, set of track. So be aware of that. The other thing that can happen is the opposite. Uh, when it gets real cold, these rails can shrink. And again, if they are not allowed to move uh, by leaving uh, your rail joiners uh, at, at certain intervals uh, unsoldered to the rails, then you can have problems with the rails and the the, the track, and you don't want those kind of things to happen. So just be aware of that. If your lay layout is located in an attic, a loft, a garage, uh, an outdoor shed or a barn or something like that, where it can, uh, it, where you can expect extremes of temperature uh, uh, and humidity, then look out because that can be a problem. Now, I'm located, my layout here is located in my basement. It's heated and climate controlled. So it stays about, 50% relative humidity down here all the time. And uh, the temperature varies anywhere from around 65 to 70 degrees. 
most of the time. So I'm not concerned about that, but I am going to leave some floaters down in here because, uh, or some rail joiners that are not soldered, simply because this is a, a spot it's going to be out of sight and out of mind most of the time. So if anything uh, cuts loose, I want it to be able to shrink or expand as needed. And the other good thing is, of course, this is a stub end yard. So the far end of this yard, um, the rails will be just butt ended. So they will be able to expand out that way without any uh, problems and impedance at all from other rails. So I'm not too worried about that. But uh, I have man, I have decided to uh, leave a, a number of rail joiners, or at least one set of rail joiners, on each one of these yard tracks unsoldered. I want to start uh, by taking a look at uh, the way I'm doing my rail connections here between my uh, my power bus and my uh, my rails. Now, if you remember, this is the connection will be here to the DCC power bus, and all of my red rails are going to be fed off directly off of the bus. The green rails, the inside rails, are going to be fed through each one of the uh, switch machines so that I can switch power on and off here. And in order to, uh, to be able to isolate each one of these inside rails, uh, the green rails, I'm going to be leaving a gap here and here and so on so that uh, it will not pick up power from the adjacent rail. So I'm going to have a, uh, a green uh, feeder attached to the inside rail on each one of the tracks uh, in order to be able to switch power on and off to that rail. So that's why I'm going to be leaving these rails uh, unsoldered and a slight gap big enough at least to get my fingernail down in there so that there, if it does expand, uh, it's not going to close that gap and uh, defeat my, my uh, objective in, in selectively powering these inside rails and being able to turn power off to the track. So what I want to do now is go ahead and solder a couple of these in place. I'm not going to do all of them for you because, you know, they're, you know once you've done one, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's not an issue. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to go about doing one of them or, or two, and then we'll proceed after that uh, to something else. So I'm going to take a little bit of my paste flux here, drop it into place, and I've got my soldering iron heated up, and I'm still using my uh, pencil tip, still testing that method out. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and apply some solder to this piece of solid wire. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one while I'm at it here. Uh, these are 18 gauge solid wires. Uh, so I'm pre-tinning them. And then I'm going to pre-tin the track where I'm going to apply the, uh, where I'm going to attach it. Okay, I think that'll work. Yeah, so you can see I can get this tip right in there against the side of the web of that rail fairly easily and then just apply my solder very quickly in there. Okay, so that is prepared. Let me do the other one back there. We'll get that second one and hit it with the heat and that tip goes right down in there. Great. That's what I was wanting. And then it gets heated up very quickly and we get a good solder joint there. Now let's go ahead and we'll attach the, uh, we'll get the wires in place. And the good thing is if you pre tin all of your work like this, then as soon as you hit the work with the heat, it's going to melt and you're going to get a good solder joint. There we go. Okay, so that one, good tight solid joint there. So that's got the feeder wire, it's down, out of the way. It's not going to interfere with traffic or with cars on the track. And let me go ahead and we'll get this other one back here done. Let me get it down near where it's going to be. Okay, and I'm going to put that in place like so. And then work from this side and apply the heat. Okay. 
Here we go. Okay, so we've got a good tight solder joint there as well. So that's basically, I just have to do this, you know, seven more times uh, to get these other rails uh, completed. And I have another string of these down at the other end to attach to the track down there as well. Because you want to have your feeders uh, about every six to eight feet. And um, so in this location, I'm going with about six feet. Now this track here is only 10 feet long, so it's gonna be about five or six feet down there. This one's 10. Each one of these are going to be 10 feet until you get over to the back over there. And then you've got a couple of them are running about 12 feet long. And then the one, the reverse loop uh, uh, track on the very rear there, that goes all the way around to the next room to where the reverse loop is located. Okay, while we've got the soldering iron out, let's go ahead and take care of this rail joiners here. Uh, do a couple of those for you. The first thing I want to do is, I told you I need to leave a gap here. So I've got my Dremel tool with a cutting disc and I'm going to go ahead and cut through here to make sure I've got a good uh, gap in between these two rails on the back side. This one up here, the, the front rail, I'm going to be soldering. Okay, let me turn this on and make some noise. Okay, so that's all there is to cutting the gaps and making sure that I've got uh, an expansion gap in there, at least a, a small one. Okay, so that gives me the gap that I need here and here. That'll, that'll ensure that the, uh, the back rail on all of these tracks is going to be independently powered uh, through the uh, switch machines. So let's go ahead and we'll do, a, a do some soldering here get a couple of these rail joiners soldered in place because I do want these to be connected. I, like I said, I'm only leaving uh, one uh, set of joiners free floating and that's going to be further on down the track from this location here. Okay, so to start, I'm just going to hit the uh, rail joiner here with a bit of the paste flux. I don't use a lot because my solder is a, uh, a rosin core solder, so I don't have to worry about it really. But I do like to add a little extra of the rosin flux uh, on the side of these uh, rail joiners because I, uh, I will be applying a bit of heat here. And you know, if you're not careful, you can go ahead and cook off some of, the, uh, some of that flux that's in the core of the solder. So let me go ahead and get this done here. We'll get that in place and stable. There we go. So that's in place. Now let's do the next one behind it. Go ahead and apply some heat there. And you can see that tip just fits right down in there. And that solder will just flow right down into that uh, rail joiner. There we go. So that's two of those done now, and we have a good gap on the green rail here. Let's go ahead and take a look now at how I'm going to handle these green feeders. You'll note here that I cut this notch underneath of the uh, rails. And I've done that uh, with each one of these rails where I'm going to be uh, uh, adding these feeders. So what I'm going to do is, on this particular track here, I'm going to, or this rail, I'm going to add the feeder here run it underneath of the track through this uh, ditch uh, or through this cut that I've made and then bring it up. And then I can attach it uh, to the device that I'm going to use to switch power. Now in this location, uh, the, this, track here is, this track here is actually fed off of the last IP digital switch machine on the ladder. 
So I don't have a, a way of controlling this one. So what I'm going to do is something very different, and I'll show you that in a, in, in a next video. But I do have to bring a green feeder out to here uh, so that I can access the uh, device that I'm going to use to uh, switch power here. So let's go ahead and go and do that one first. So I'm going to take this feeder and put the little bend in it like that so that it's ready. And then I'm just going to feed it underneath here. I'm going to go ahead and pre tin that wire. Okay, that's pre tinned and it's going to be right on that one. I'll bring it into place. Okay, so that's a good solid joint. So what I'm going to be doing for the rest of these, I'm going to be using this 16 gauge stranded wire because, you know, this is going to be a very long run, 10 feet, and in some cases, uh, 15 feet uh, for the green bus wire or the, uh, the green rail wire. And uh, in order to prevent voltage drops, I'm going to go with 16 gauge. Now, I might have been able to get away with 18 gauge, but you know, I did the calculations and I feel safer using the uh, using 16 gauge, a slightly larger wire uh, so that there's less resistance and less chance of the voltage dropping down below a critical level. So you can see this green wire here that goes underneath of the rails. I'm going to be attaching a green feeder wire here, an 18 gauge wire here, uh, using my uh, uh, suitcase connector here. And then we'll attach it to the inside of this rail. I have my suitcase connector ready to go. I'm going to put it on the 16 gauge wire like that. And as you can see, I've already prepared a feeder ready to go into it. So let's go ahead and we'll add a feeder like that, ready to go. And now it's simply a matter of clamping down on this and getting a good solid uh, joint here. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, clamp down on my suitcase connector here and get a good solid connection like that. Close it and we're ready to attach it. And what I'm going to do to get this out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and cut a recess underneath here. like this, and like that, and we'll pop that out, and that'll give us a place where we can put this suitcase connector out of the way. So that'll be able to fit down in here, out of the way, and we can get our feeder attached to the side of the rail here, like that. First, we'll put on just a little bit of the uh, rosin flux, and then we will pretend things. Okay, that, and need to pretend the back side of the rail here. Like that. And I'm going to just set the feeder down here in place and hit it with a bit of heat, just enough to melt those, that solder together. Good solid joint in both locations. So you can see that's going to clear all of our rolling stock and nothing's going to be hanging down low enough to grab that. 
Now to hold these wires in place that I have uh, running on top of the uh, foam, I have these uh, staples that are shaped like this. These are sold for uh, low vo to use with low voltage wiring. And so it creates a little rounded uh, hump here where the wire can uh, run through. And so I'm just taking those and pushing them down into the foam like so. And those will hold it uh, firmly in place. Uh, if it becomes a problem later on, I can come back with some liquid nails for projects and tack these down at periodic intervals. But so far, these seem to be able to hold them down fairly well. So as you can see here, I've done one back here and the like. So those, will, those will, I think will do the job very well. And once all of those green feeders are installed, then I can run those uh, to my switch machines that we'll be installing here in a minute uh, on the ladder. So in this installation, I'm going to be using the Cobalt IP Digital switch machines that I uh, introduced to you in uh, uh, previous videos. I use this for automating the reverse loop that's going to be used with this uh, staging yard. And I did a video on uh, the IP Digital comparing it to the tortoise and, and the like. So I'll put links uh, to uh, both of those videos above me here and at the end as well. And let's go ahead and take a look at how I'm going to use these here on the, uh, on the staging yard. Now, first of all, you, you remember I put in this uh, connection to the frog. So that's going to be connected here to the frog uh, outlet on the IP Digital that it already has built into it. And I can just fit a slot and fit it right into that slot. I'll have my connections to the uh, main power bus to come into here. Uh, the uh, accessory decoder bus will go into here and we'll go into all of that specialized wiring in the next video because in order to be able to do everything that I wanted to do down in here, uh, the IP Digital offers a lot of different capabilities built right into it and that's one of the reasons why I decided to go ahead and, and use it down here as opposed to using uh, tortoises. In addition to that, it's got an accessory decoder built right into it, so it's going to work great with the uh, control panel system that I'm going to show you in a couple of weeks. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install the IP Digital Switch Machine and use it uh, to control the points here on the layout. Now since I'm installing these right here on the top of the green foam, I'm just going to use these uh, foam pads, they're adhesive on both sides, and you just peel, peel one side off here like this, and attach it to the bottom of the switch machine, like that. I'm not going to peel the other one off yet because I'm going to show you some other things first. On the throw bar here, on the uh, microengineering, and, and just about all other uh, turnouts I'm aware of, they have, you know, pre-drilled holes through the uh, throw bar. So I've got one on this side, one in the middle, and one on this side. And what I'm going to do is make a connection right here to this one. So what I've done here is, as you can see, I've taken the uh, wire that you normally would go up through the bottom of the layout. Uh, I just took it and put a 90 degree bend in it this way, and then another one 90 degree bend downward right here at my finger. So I'm going to be able to insert the end of the wire into the hole here in the throw bar. And then whenever the switch machine cycles, it's going to move that set of points one way or the other. And I'll be able to control that using accessory decoder commands. So that's how I'm going to go about doing that. So let me go ahead. I want to go ahead and install all of my IP digital switch machines. I've got eight of them for controlling the, um, the turnouts here on the yard ladder. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of those installed. Uh, and then in the next video, we will proceed with doing the final wiring for all of this because by the time we get around to Friday, I will have all of the wires on the layout uh, connected. I will have the main power buses run. I will have the accessory decoder 
control bus uh, installed and operating. And then we can take all of these wires that I've been installing uh, up to this point, connect them to the IP digital switch machine and see if this thing is going to work. But first we're going to have to build a control panel and that's going to come in about two weeks. So hang in there. We're, we're moving along quite well. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Uh, I got a lot accomplished in the, uh, in the last few days. And by the time we get back together again, I hope to have this yard pretty well uh, wrapped up and to the point where we can do a lot of the, the final wiring and do some final connections here uh, on the staging yard. So have a good week and uh, be safe out there. We'll see you here on Friday with another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.